let's read the 4.0 patch notes here on Fortnite. The newest season has arrived finally, and with it comes a ton of changes, and we are gonna go through. Now it's too loud, isn't it? We're gonna go through and read them, even though my voice is dying, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy it, okay? Season four, are you ready? So we're not gonna read the PVE stuff, that's for an entirely different game. I only play PvP, so we're gonna read the PvP patch notes. And now I'm not gonna read it in ASMR voice, okay? Okay, so 4.0 patch notes, let's go. In general, are you ready? Input settings are now filtered based on game mode. They've also been grouped by category, combat, building, editing, etc., to make it easier to search through them. What does that even mean? Oh, that's in the settings. The input mode. So when you're putting keybinds in, they've been uh, grouped. So it's easier for you guys to create key bindings for the things that you want. Added icons for the tabs at the top of the settings screen. You guys might have noticed that in settings. It's like this, just icons for what they mean. I kind of like the words, but I guess icons work too. Um, ignore gamepad out. Oh, ignore gamepad input option in the accessibility settings tab. Helpful for players who use external programs. Okay, I don't do that, so that doesn't help me, but maybe this applies to you guys if you're using controllers. Bug fixes. Fix to crash when using radial menus. I don't know if I've ever got crashes from that. Improve texture streaming behavior when using a scope. That's amazing. Fix maybe that's why I was hitting so many sniper shots today. I don't know. Fix some objects being rendered using low resolution textures. That's fantastic. Fixed weapon ammo count display in the HUD, which is sometimes incorrect. Okay, lots of bug fixes. Uh, known issues, wanting to track the top community issues, head over to the community board. There you guys go. Tracking for the self-refund issue. There we go. Let's get into the battle royale. Changes now. Okay, here we go. Gameplay. Structures on the starting islands can now be destroyed. Not the battle pass, but not the battle bus though. This is really exciting because now I have more things to do while I wait for everyone to join my lobby and I can destroy stuff, which is very satisfying as you guys know. Headshots are now prioritized when other body parts are in the way. Okay, so incoming headshots from above or straight on will no longer be blocked by your character's other body parts. Maybe that's why I got so many headshots today. For example, a shot that hits your target's hand will be able to penetrate through and hit their head. If your aim was on point, you'll be credited headshot damage instead of normal damage. Wow, that's beautiful. Headshots from below that are blocked by body parts will do normal damage except for impacts very close to your character's head. This change affects all weapons except for the lo rocket launcher and the grenade launcher. That makes sense. Slightly reduced hitbox size of player hands. I didn't realize I even had a hitbox on my hand. So, that, well, I mean, it makes sense, but... Damage numbers are now visible when spectating a player. Oh, I like that a lot. That's gonna be a big change because I die a lot and I like to be able to help my teammates out a lot. Uh, knocking a player off the island will award elimination credit! Bless! That's fantastic, what a good change. Fall distance is now shown in the elimination feed when a player is forced to fall by an opponent. Oh, so this will be like a sniper or rifle shot. It'll be like 200 meter. Ball. <laughs> Tiger, thank you so much for that prime sub. Welcome to the team. On the starting island, you can now see other player and player created structures about three times further away than before. On this, only on the starting island though. Okay. Bug fixes. Fix an issue that would cause player built structures to appear intact for a few seconds after eliminating an enemy and destroying their structure at the same time. This caused, ooh, players to phase through the structure. There you go. Fixed cases where pickup moved erratically when sliding down slopes. Pickups moved erratically. What were, what are pickups? And how would they move erratically? Fixed an issue where destroying a building from under an enemy would not award kill credit. I did have that happen to me a couple times. Mostly when they would um, jump, jump. Fix an issue where swinging the pickaxe would cause movement stuttering. Okay, good to know. Fix an issue where some pre-placed wooden archways could not be destroyed by player-built structures. Yes, that messed me up so bad, actually, because when you're trying to place your wall and it's not destroying and the person can see through easily, that's a really good change, actually. Fix an issue that made the battle bus appear to quickly fly off the map after jumping from it. 
Fix an issue that would pause a downed player's health bar if their reviver disconnected while reviving them. Okay, I never had that happen to me and I'm really glad I didn't because that would trigger me so hard. Okay, you can now mark cosmetic items as favorites in the locker. That's amazing. Like with them adding so many different cosmetic things, I think that's really important to do that. And this option is literally the holy grail of changes they made, honestly. Your loot spaz out. Oh, like when it's, when someone's dying and you sent it down a hill. I got it. Okay, so that's what they meant by the um, pickup smooth erratically sliding down slope. So now it's smoother. Okay, this random option added to each cosmetic equipment slot in the locker. I really love that because I have so many skins and so much stuff now. So being able to do that is just like fantastic. Um, and if you've marked them as favorites, it'll randomly choose between those, which is amazing because I don't love all the backpacks. I don't love all the skins. So it's nice to be able to pick your favorites and then only have those cycle through. Great, great, great decision. Fortnite, well played, guys. You are no longer limited to just the six slots on your emo wheel. For sprays and emos, you can now use any ones in your, you own in a match. Locker slots act as a page of presets you can cycle through with your scroll wheel. I guess, I'm assuming you can uh, bind that to something. Added new locker emote slot button bindings, which allow you to immediately trigger any of your six emo or sprays. Yes! Okay. After playing on a no skip or playing on a new account the other day when I was doing viewer games, I really appreciated just being able to hit B and a dance move, get toggled. Like when you just want to hit the dab right after you kill someone, I think that this is gonna be really satisfying to have. Um auto well, auto run is active and icon is now displayed. That's cool. Improve the look and feel of the game options tab. Slightly decrease the size of the arrow over players' heads when they are close to you. I'm assuming that's more for like the 50-50 stuff. The fourth and fifth weapon slots will now... Oh! Is there arrows over your teammates' heads? The fourth and fifth weapon slots will now default keys 5 and 6 instead of Z and X. Okay, thank God! Because I was like really confused when I went to Z and X the other day. Uh, four three aspect ratio is now supported. A lot of people really, really like four three. I know a lot of people played that uh, four three in Counter Strike. Um, apparently, it was easier for um, sniper sniper shots and things like that. So interesting. Bug fixes fix an issue where the compass showed three sixty when it should have said three fifty nine. Fix an issue where players could get stuck on the inventory screen when opening and closing it very quickly, multiple times in a row. Okay. <laughs> Fix an issue where the show net stats HUD option would be reset to off after restarting the game. Actually, that happened to me a few times. Fix an issue that caused consumable timers to not display when using a consumable immediately after canceling one. Interesting. Fixed a spelling error in the description for tomato head. <laughs> the squad comms will now be closed with a circle on PS4 controllers and B on Xbox controllers. Weapon slot key binding options are no longer called ability slots in the input menu. Weapon and items! The crossbow has been vaulted. That means that they took it away out of the game and it's vaulted until further use, I guess. Like, that's so sad, actually, because I really liked the crossbow. Um, I didn't pick it up that often, but when I did, I would I would enjoy it. Um, rocket launcher aim re re reticle, reticle is now a fixed size regardless of player movement. Hit markers are now displayed when looking through a scope. That's really sweet. Increased pickaxe damage against supply lamas. Lamas now dealing 50 damage per hit. Against supply lamas? Why would you want to hurt the supply llama? <laughs> Why would you want to kill the supply llama? Fix an issue where a weapon could have no ammo when dropping it immediately after picking it up. That's sad. Improve pickaxe swing responsiveness when switching from a weapon to the pickaxe and immediately holding the swing button. That's nice. Fix an issue that prevented hunting rifles from auto reloading if it was fired immediately after a reload. Fix an issue that allowed grenades to be thrown in rapid succession while sprinting. I thought that was a nice addition. I thought that was something that they added so that I could enjoy. Go pew, pew, pew. I loved when that happened. That's sad, actually. I didn't know that was an issue. Uh, fix an issue where aiming a grenade throw and then switching to build mode wouldn't cancel the throw. Cool. Fix an issue where the builder pro configuration that caused the player's weapon to fire while trying to build in some cases. Okay, good to know. Clingers will now properly cling to falling. So yes! Yes, we were talking about this yesterday. That's amazing. Oh, if you break the llama, it opens it? Oh, I didn't know that. Good to know. 
Um, all right, replay system. Added an in-game player list to replays. Okay, good to know. Leaving a replay will now take you back to the replay browser. Renaming replays is now limited to 32 characters. Increase the size of name column in replay. Oh, I, I, I didn't even know you could rename this. Cool. Increase the size of name column in replay browser. Fix the alignment of the eliminations column. Fix an issue where a replay browser list couldn't be navigated with gamepad. Hunting rifle mesh and animations have been up. Oh yeah, lots of different animation changes. Hunting rifle mesh and animations are updated. Shotgun, revolver, hand cannon, rocket launcher, how their equipped animations improved. Now match equip time. That's nice actually because when you're trying to play and you pull it out and it looks like you have it out and ready to go, but there's a delay on your shot, it kind of messes with your brain. Storm wind now affects trees within the storm. Good to know. Dust cloud that appears on player landings now show for all players. Interesting. Fix the supply llama not playing destruction effects when killed by projectiles. Fix finish. Oh man, I did not know you could kill a supply llama. This is so good to know. Fix an issue that caused black back bling to display improperly after using a launch pad. I've never noticed that, but that's cool. Players can now emote while rocket riding. Oh my God, this game just understands. It understands the memes. Yeah, no more 50-50 this week. Okay, we're almost done. Audio, adjusted timing on the equip sounds for all shotguns. The cocking sound will now occur right before the weapon is available to fire. Improve volume difference between soft and hard landing sounds. Ooh, cool. Players rolling from one or more stories will land with a louder audio cue. Good to know. Added unique impact sounds when hitting shrubs, bushes, and corn stalks. Fixed an issue that caused footstep audio to play when players were mid-air after jumping. That's such a troll. Fixed an issue that minigun equip sound would persist after switching away from it. I mean, do we any of us use the minigun? <laughs> I'm surprised that the minigun wasn't vaulted, but the crossbow was. Map marker sound no longer plays when removing a marker. All right. Improved smoothness of other players' movement on the starting island by increasing network update rates. Made significant performance improvements when players are on screen by reducing the impact of character parts. Optimized hitches that occur when garbage collecting objects. Fixed hitches that could happen in game where lots of building occurred. We felt that yesterday. Optimized level of detail for buildings and shifty shafts and flush factory. That's good. Optimize input and output performance on consoles to reduce hitches and load time. Now, for any of you guys that are playing on mobile, Quick Bar now supports drag and drop for dropping and moving inventory items. That's really good. Holding the movement stick in a direction for three seconds now enables an option to turn on auto run. Bless up. Adding repair button button. Repair building button. Added cycle weapon button. Made improvements to prevent finger creep. What is finger creep? I will, Aaron, after this. Yuri destroyed my uh, green screen today. Slightly decreased aim assist strength at further distances to allow fine tuning when aiming. Grenade indicators are now displayed when grenades are equipped. Made improvement to low end mobile performance by dynamically scaling background draw distances with player height. Reduced object draw distance for medium and lower end iOS devices. Fix the view pop that caused by swiping inertia when lifting your fingers off the screen and fix bugs that were causing some erroneous misfires and input errors. All right, guys, that is the whole list of the 4.0 patch notes. Season four is here. I'm so excited. I'm already level 100 and uh, I'm ready to play some video games now. So let's let's get back into it, shall we? Yeah.